Why do you like sitting in the dark for, man? Because sometimes I love basking in the glow of natural light. Uh, it's better than those migraine-inducing fluoros up there. Now, people ask me all the time, they say, Abs, how do you get so many freaking Karens? I've been in a business for 10 years, Abs, I've only had one. Good for you, you know. Uh, but to answer this question, I was going to say answer, but to answer this question, uh, I have to delve back into my mysterious past and uh, tell you how I started this business. And um, aside from being an entertaining story, hopefully, it may inspire someone to go ahead and, you know, take that step to start their own business. Or it may scare you away. I don't know. But, you know, I'm doing a service for you, right? So, um, in 1998, <laughs> that's that's how far back we go. Um, I wanted an arcade machine. But I couldn't afford one. I was broke. And even if I had $1,000 or so that they were going for back then, um, they only came with one game. And I'm thinking, how soon would I get sick of this game if it only had one game? But I had an app back then, uh, or a program as we called it, called MAME, Multi Arcade Machine Emulator. I still have this, but in the latest version of it. Um, and MAME came with uh, 26 games at the time. Well, that was a ROM list at the time. I had that on my PC. And um, the way MAME worked is that they took a dump. That's the wrong choice of words. They dumped the contents of a game board onto a PC and um, and they got some really smart programmers to emulate the circuitry like a Zilog Z80 or a Motorola 68000 or whatnot. And so these games are all the actual true-to-life, like, true games, uh, not a version of. And that's what MAME is today. It's just a huge dump of almost every game board in existence, right? Um, so I thought, how cool would it be to put this system in an arcade machine? And uh, I had rudimentary woodworking skills back then, uh, just high school woodwork, you know. And um, I thought I'd start with the prototype, which is the one that I'm giving away. That one, yeah. Um, so I thought, start small and uh, see how you go. And then if it works, if it fits together properly, I could just scale it up, right? But all I had was a handsaw and a drill, so I had to start small. And I, and I built that one, and um, but it was an empty cabinet. So then I built a larger cabinet. But I realized that, um, I, I'll just show you a picture of it right here. This is the second ever cabinet that I built besides that prototype. You can see the proportions on this are way off. Um, that artwork, by the way, I actually airbrushed that on myself. I did all of that artwork because I couldn't afford stickers back then. Uh, I, I have an artistic streak and you could probably call it an autistic streak as well. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows, right? So um, the reason that cabinet is so deep everyone's deep man, uh, is because my prototype, I built that around a 21 inch LED screen, but with a big cabinet like that, I needed at least a 24 inch LED screen, and in 1998, they were about six to eight hundred dollars, if I remember correctly, they were very expensive, but you can get an old CRT screen, uh, that's the old glass tube screens I grew up with, uh, for about 50 bucks, so I built it, the depth of that machine is to accommodate the really deep CRT screens, um, so that's where I was, now I put the system in there, and I had a dilemma. How do I get the joysticks to communicate with the with the actual computer? Because back then, there was no home arcade industry. You couldn't just buy joysticks and buttons. I had to buy second-hand joysticks and buttons that came off older machines and stuff. There was no market like there is today where you can just buy anything. And I didn't have any encoders. The encoders are the programmable keyboard that we attach everything to and that communicates with the PC. Um, now, the app allowed for a, a gamepad. Um, and that was plugged into serial on the PC because USB was still really young. It was I think USB came out in 1996. This is 98. A lot of computers didn't have USB ports, right? So I noticed that in in that particular app, uh, in MAME, um, to get your joystick or your gamepad working, you have to map it to keyboard buttons. So up, down, left, right was the cursor keys on the keyboard. Uh, that's you have to map it on your controller. So up is up on your on your keyboard, down is down, etc. And the other buttons were arbitrary. You can map those. So I realized. What if I break apart a keyboard and solder a wire from my joystick controllers down to the track on that keyboard membrane to the corresponding key? What if that would work? And it did. It actually worked, which surprised me. Uh, so I had a working arcade machine with 29 games on it, which was unheard of back then. They weren't around, you know. Now, I'm not saying I invented putting in a PC with MAME on it into an arcade system uh, back then, but I can guarantee that I was the only one in this country that was selling them. You couldn't find them anywhere. I was the only one. So I quite, kind of cornered the market. But the way I started the business was I built that. I liked it. I lived in a cul-de-sac at the time. And all of my neighbors around me, oh, I was building an arcade machine. Let's see how it goes. And when I finally finished it, they were fucking blown away. 
And one of my neighbors said, hey, man, um, you know, my kid's in a wheelchair. He'd love one of these. Can you build one? But shorter, he can roll his wheelchair underneath it. I said, yeah, sure, why not? He said, how much would it cost? I go, man, I don't know. It took me two weeks to build, you know. And um, he said, a thousand bucks. I'm like, fuck, a thousand bucks. Yeah, okay, yeah, done. Of course, yeah, yeah, that should cover it. <laughs> cost me a couple of hundred in parts and a lot of labor because I was cutting everything up by hand with a handsaw and it was just, it was messy, right? And I was filing them back, you know, that's how I built that one. I cut out with a handsaw, filed it back by hand with a file and shit. So then I cleaned it up over the years. So um, I built his one and I decided to sell my one on eBay. And I thought I'd get six, seven hundred bucks for it. It got fifteen hundred dollars on eBay. You know, I'm like fucking wow. You know, but the thing is, I had about five people contact me after that saying, "Man, I missed the auction. Do you still have any more of these? Or can you build any?" I'm like, of course I can. So I took. I said, "Look, it's going to take a couple of weeks to to build." You know, because uh, I had a day job back then. It was just a nine to five piece of shit minimum wage job. And this this I decided this would be a good side hustle. It's always been a side hustle, really. You know, but. I took the guy's money, the first guy. I said, it's going to take two weeks. Said, I'll pay right now. So I took 1500 bucks off him. And all the other guys, I told them two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. And the last guy was going to wait about 10 weeks. And they gave me all the money up front. That's seven and a half grand up front. I've never had that much money to myself in my entire life. I grew up very poor, you know, and I was always living paycheck to paycheck, you know. And this was just, I felt rich, you know. So I immediately went out and bought a whole bunch of tools. I spent about $800, I think. I bought a, uh, a jigsaw, I bought a router, I bought a small table saw, I bought a spray paint gun, um, and a, a belt sander, and an orbital sander, and I built myself a workbench, you know, uh, so I had everything that I needed. So I dropped my build time from, it used to take me about four and a half hours to cut by hand a whole template out, and then assemble it about four and a half hours. Those tools dropped it down to about one and a half hours. So it saved me three hours. Then I realized that it's not going to take me two weeks to build one of these. The only reason it took me two weeks is because I was taking my time with the other one. I can have one knocked off on the weekend. And that's exactly what I did. Knocked off on the weekend. Sent the first one out. And the next guy, rather than waiting 10 weeks, is waiting five weeks and made him happy. So I started selling these on eBay for the longest time. And they were just selling like fucking hotcakes. You know, just, just like I'd sell one, I'd get eight people that want it, so that'll sell, I have seven people on hold waiting, you know, and then I got better and better at it, and I decided, you know what, I should quit my job, my little piece of shit minimum wage job, and um, see, I have an engineering degree, but I couldn't get hired back then, because I had a blemish on my on my criminal record, so I just had to do what I had to do, so this was a good hustle for me, you know, while I eventually leveled up and found my way around, so I was selling these um, just on eBay for a while, and it got some attention, you know, from people, larger entities, you know, not huge ones like the last video, Coca-Cola and that, but, you know, advertising agencies and stuff, you know, but they wanted one for their offices. What I found was that a lot of businesses know what the other businesses are going, what they're up to, you know, they communicate with each other. So I'd find that I'd get constant orders from advertising agencies, one would order one, then another rival one would want one for their office too, but it's got to be better than the last one. Then the third one would want one that's better than the other two, you know, it was, oh, I can see my guns today. All right, so anyway, so, um, that's how I started, and that's how the Karens came to be, because I thought, I need to get my name out there, eBay's not really enough, you know, it's just for the home market, so I started approaching charities, saying, hey, you know, um, how about I build one of these for you, and I'll leave it here, and I'll brand it, you know, I'll put my logo and that on there, and you can keep all the money this thing makes, I had a coin mechanism in there, and I'll leave it here for two weeks or a month, you know, and um, all I'm really doing is, is renting one square meter of space from you, and then all the money you get, you keep. And then after a month or two weeks or whatever the term was, I'll take it back and give it to the next guy. I started doing that. And this is where the Karens came about. If you've seen some of my Reddit videos where I've gone to try to repossess a machine and they won't let me take it, you know. Um, so on some that would argue that, you know, they, please let us keep the machine, you know, like, oh, we love it. It's so good. It's making us so much money. It's The kids love it. I'd say, well, why don't you buy it off me? So all of a sudden when it's free, it's the greatest thing in the world. But when I want to buy it, oh, but, you know, there's a problem with it there. And I said, no, nah, man, buy it outright or, or whatever. So I decided to do a 10% return with some. Because I noticed that when I worked in the snook room a long time ago, they had about 20 arcade machines, but they didn't own them. Uh, it was like a, what do they call it, a redemption, no, consignment, whatever the word was at the time. Um, it's like a 60-40 split. The owners, the organization that own the machines will, will place them. And every week or so, they'll empty them out and they'll take 60 percent of the profits or 60 percent of what it made and give 40 percent to the uh, owner of the business so lucky L luciano my boss was getting 40 percent of everything the machines made and he wasn't paying for them you know so 
I decided to do that. I charged some 40%, some 30%, and some of the good guys 10% um, because I just liked them, you know. And, yeah, the Karens came from there. A lot of my Reddit stuff was charity-related because, you know, they've got an issue or whatever it's going to be. The other Karens are usually from advertising agencies um, where they see the potential these things have where, hey, we can brand this and use it as a, as a billboard, you know, and place it in a, somewhere in the city or somewhere in where's a high traffic location, you know, and uh, and they can make some money out of that through advertising and through people playing the machine. And they'll come to me and say, hey, you know what, we want five of these, but they don't want to pay. I'll say, well, that's going to cost you seven and a half grand, you know, but they don't want to pay for that. Or what is it, six and a half grand, five? I, I can't, I can't, I can't math today. What, what's 1500 times five? Dude, seven and a half grand. Yeah, right. So um, they don't want to pay. They want to pay in exposure. Like, hey, man, you know, um, we normally charge 10 grand for an advertising package. Um, you want to charge us seven and a half for the machine. So how about we'll give you the advertising package as a barter. You give us the machines, we'll give you $10,000 worth of advertising. At the time, the mistake I made, which a lot of small businesses make, is that you're desperate for the business. You want, you'll do anything it takes to get the sale, which includes taking people's shit and you know complying to some outrageous fucking ridiculous demands. So I tried the first advertising agency. I got burnt. I got nothing from them. You know, um, but I signed a contract with them. The machines were theirs, you know. But when other advertising agencies used to call for the same thing, I can then tell them to go get fucked, even though I was desperate for the business. And um, then slowly, slowly from that, um, I just, I think my first one was Hewlett Packard. Um, I don't know how they found me, to be honest, but that was the first one I did, right? Um, and then I did, I think, 15 for them. And then I decided to sell my small machines. And if you saw my last video, I told you the story behind that somewhat. I sold 2,000 units for about 1,000 bucks each. So it's, it's made some good money. But I didn't sell the first prototype because it held a place in my heart sort of thing. And I sold those two large entities. I think I listed 100 on eBay. I put quantity 100. There wasn't 100 really, you know. But I thought rather than keep releasing the ad, they can buy one at a time. Sold out within an hour. One guy bought 100. I'm thinking, fuck, that's 100 grand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. And he paid 10% down because obviously they want to pay 100, uh, 100 grand down. And um, I said, look, man, I need 50% down because 50% cover the parts. It's like I'm not, I didn't even have a website back then. You know, this is going back, I think, late 90s, early 2000s now. Didn't have a website, nothing like that. And um, so I will build 10 at a time for him, you know, and he'll pay for 10 at a time. And when there was 50 left, he paid the whole amount. And like, wow. And then as in the last video, I didn't, ex I didn't really look into taxes very well. So I got charged a lot of tax. Uh, but I sold 2,000 of those, and then all of a sudden I had Coca-Cola, Pepsi, I had uh, Madman, I had Sony BMG 1-1 for a film clip, I didn't add that in the last video, um, I had Smith's Chips, which is Lay's Chips, I own Lay's, they, they did a big promotion, like, you know, scan this IR code, or uh, enter the draw to win one of these sort of thing, and I got out there, and, um, you know, here we are. Do I like it? No. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a work for me now, you know, it's good money. You know, but I, I still have a day job because this is not my career. I my day job is I want to retire into not this. This is just too physical and shit for me. I, I will sell this one day, or maybe pass it on to someone one day, maybe the staff or something, just before I die or whatever. But here we are, and uh, that's how I started. Oh wait, we're gonna cover this, man. Um, that's how I started, and this is where I am. And uh, it's been a long video, but um, you know what? Let's do something. Let's play. What's your favorite shooter ever, Abs? Here we go. Favorite shooter ever. Um, all of these. <laughs> really, there's like about 70 of them. But R-Type, the R9A Arrowhead is my favorite ship ever. That one right there. I just I just love that. And then I think a close second would be our Darius, the Darius series ships. Darius Burst especially. And then you've got Gradius. I'm just going to go through all the ships. You've got the Vic Viper. And the greatest Matarion, you've got Raiden Mark II. I love that guy. Look how sexy that ship is. Uh, then you've got the Raiden Mark V in the back. That's Terra Cresta. That's an Alpha, uh, Beta, Epsilon, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. There's five ships. They combine to form one, one big ship. Um, then, I'll just go through more. That's a CF-345 Blackfly from Metal Black. Uh, there's different iterations of that ship. Um, there's a Thunder Force ships, there's a Fire Leo Rhinex and the Fire Leo Sticks. There's also the Sylphid Spriggan Mark II right there. That's a P-51 Mustang made in 1942. 
uh, RAF Leverton owned this one and it was given to me as a gift. And then you've got Kamui Liberation Girl in the back. Never played that. Um, or Liberation Maiden, I think it's called. You got uh, the Wolf Fang from Armor Force, Roger. The Musha Aleste in the back. You've got Zex Zex Flintlock in two iterations, power up and non-power up. Um, the Japanese call it Frint Rock, but it's Flintlock. You've got the Image Fight Daedalus right there. You've got the Raystorm R Grey 1. I had the R Grey 2, the blue one, that's downstairs. Uh, you've got the Toryu from Terror Diver, play 1 and 2. Submarines from In the Hunt, they're called um, Granvia and Squoon. <laughs> Squoon is a little submarine that you see uh, there somewhere. X Multiply, one of my favorite games ever. You've got Starblade Geo Sword in the back. You've got the Star Glider, the Star Soldier Caesar, and the Star Luster Gaia. You've got the Maneuver Scepter from Granada in the bottom there. And then everyone's favorites, you've got the Fanny Zone Opa Opa. This guy, let's take him off. He's too cute. Just love this guy. Opa Opa. Um, and you've got the Twin Bee and Win Bee from the Twin Bee games. And, um,. That's it, I've got more, I just haven't, my cabinet won't fit them, but I've got the boxes here as well, and I've also got uh, my Commodore SX64, this was brought up, this is a Commodore 64 computer with a built-in CRT screen, keyboards there, that's a keyboard plug, it doesn't go in there, that's for an extra hard drive or just, you know, put your floppy disk in there, and um, I'm going to do this one handed, let's just take this out, and floppy disk, I just love the aesthetics of this thing. Put it back in again. Well, I love when it locks in. I've got my Amiga 1200. Uh, I learned how to code on this. I learned 68,000 assembly on this. But this has something really cool. It's got... That, oh, shit. Oh, no, don't drop it. It's all good. It's got a... Oh, it's a memory card expansion. No, yes or no. That's a 6 one mass coprocessor. It's a floating point unit with 4 megs of onboard RAM, which was unheard of back in the day. Uh, it's basically an accelerator card. Uh, that's awesome. I love this thing. It still works. I've got some music videos I made in my videos down below somewhere that I made on this computer. Pac-Man from Midway. Original. Takes 4 C-sized batteries. I've got my Apple IIc with a monitor. I've got my TAC Hi-Fi with the still shit in there. Boombox, I've got Donkey Kong, the original, in the box. Uh, I've got um, Space Rescue and I've got Helmet. I also had Parachute, which L, a friend of mine on this, brought up. I took that home and played it that night when she made the comment. Um, you, I've got joysticks, I've got more disc, disc, disc boxes. I've got the boxes for the spaceships. And you may be wondering what this tat is. Believe it or not, this is about 150 bucks. I didn't pay that, but these things here, look at how creepy these dolls are, man. Plastic toys. These are made in the 50s. And I remember when I was a kid, um, that's two cents, so you can see right there. When I was a kid, um, news agencies used to have these for about, you know, 20 cents. And um, I bought these at a job lot for about 50 bucks. Look at this fucking freakish panda. You'd think who would buy these? But my favorite by far, is um air power 12 realistic models as used by nato north atlantic treaty organization they're just plastic ships i think that's a mirage the yellow one a frenchman but you see there's a Na nazi ship there as well <laughs> it's great um so these retail these start from about 30 bucks at their bare minimum um up to about you know, 150 200 bucks each uh have a look you can see the price is in the cents, but it's the aesthetics of these. I just, I just love them. Um, there's a bow and arrow set there. There's, look at this. That's, it says three cents. It's a little catapult. It's a slingshot with little beads you shoot out. Um, but I have this habit that anything I couldn't have when I was a kid, if I come across it now, I want it. By any means necessary, I will buy it because um, I didn't have anything when I was a kid, you know, uh, my parents tried, but obviously, you know, I didn't have, I wasn't spoiled like I wanted to be, but, you know, it is what it is, um, so that's, uh, going through my collection, I've got probably twice what this is here in my garage, well, in the workshop downstairs, I just don't have room to put them here, but that's all it is, uh, uh it's me again, 
That's all I got. Love you, bye. Good luck in the competition. We're going to draw that on the 25th of September. Maybe Christmas Eve. I don't, I don't know. We'll see how we go. But uh, that's it. Love you. Bye.